There's only one reason why people get breadcrumbed by someone again and again. But you want to know what the biggest problem is? The most common approach is to end these breadcrumbing don't work. So what I want to do today is guide you through what it really takes to never be breadcrumbed again by a guy. The first thing I'd like to say, if you're currently going through a breadcrumbing situation where you connect with someone, maybe things felt really intense at the beginning, maybe sparks were flying and at some point things shifted and he's giving you the bare minimum for you to hold on to him without actually moving the dating situation or the relationship forward. Maybe from the beginning, it was never fully on, but you have this idea in your mind, this guy checks all your boxes and you're giving him sort of hall passes in the hopes that things change in the future and whatever he's going through right now, challenging situation at work, challenging personal problem gets resolved and finally he can start showing up more. Maybe you're hoping to one day show him who you really are and when he sees you, in your mind you think that he's going to shift and start stepping up the way you want to. If you are going through this type of situation, it's not only really painful, but it's one of those times in life where you get a double punch. One, the punch of how things are going, which is not exciting to go through, but B, the feeling that you're being taken advantage of, the feeling that people don't really care about you or prioritize you the way you really want to be prioritized. So whenever something like this happens, there's a tendency to beat yourself up in ways that only make the situation worse. So breadcrumbing is similar to a cat that is playing with a string. Somebody's dangling a string in front of the cat and the cat's playing and seemingly having fun, also getting a bit exasperated. The person never releases the string and the cat ends up feeling the hope and the excitement without really getting anything accomplished. Here is the reason why most people who attempt to solve a breadcrumbing situation will fail. The reason why people will fail is because they're going to attempt to solve the breadcrumbing without understanding that breadcrumbing is not a problem. Let me say this again, breadcrumbing isn't a problem, it's a symptom. So if you recognize that breadcrumbing is revealing something deeper hidden inside that needs some healing, needs some work, then you can address the root cause and make sure that breadcrumbing disappears on its own. But if you try to address the, here's what you say to the guy and here's how you should value yourself without really understanding what's preventing you from doing so, then you go through a situation where you might have the strength for a day or two and then always fall back to either with the same guy or with the next guy experience breadcrumbing again. Here's three common experiences that create the propensity for somebody to be breadcrumbed again and again. Number one is unhealed childhood wounds. I mean, we all go through painful experiences during childhood, some more than others. But when you haven't recognized what those are, when there's a fear of constant abandonment, or there was a belittlement that took place, or there was disrespect or emotional abuse or physical abuse or sexual abuse, and that hasn't really healed, then you're going to seek in your future experiences some level of normalcy even though it's something painful you're going to try to go back to that what you understood in your heart of hearts to be home second reason why breadcrumbing happens as a root source is because you lack the emotional recognition of your value you might be able to write an essay where you can say here's how i'm valuable intelligent smart a great catch so to speak but when push comes to shove your nervous system goes into this scarcity mindset and you fail to recognize what you bring to the table so much so that you allow someone who isn't showing up the way you feel like you need to to actually run the show the third reason as a root cause why this happens is because there's fear in expressing your needs and there's fear in expressing your needs because you may have never gotten your emotional needs met the way you want to maybe it was unsafe for you to do that in the past maybe you fear that if you were to express your needs a person is going to think you are too needy therefore disappear so you kind of end up without wanting to, because you're a smart human being, contorting yourself into this very painful position that without taking a step back and recognizing it, you're twisting yourself into a pretzel to attempt to get the very basic needs that your heart is craving met, but they're being met in a way that's unsustainable. They're being met in a way that is disrespectful to the truth of who you are. So the beginning of understanding how to start shifting this, and by all means, I'm not saying this is the only thing that's happened, but this is the beginning of it is asking yourself a couple of questions that are really powerful in starting a before and after in your experience of breadcrumbing. The first one is, what did you have to do to receive love as a child? 
what did you have to express? What did you have to push down? What did you have to do? How did you have to change your personality or your expression or lack thereof in order to receive love as a child and also in order to not receive pain as a child? And the next question is, what emotional pain that you experienced early in life have you normalized? For example, some people experienced emotional abuse or physical abuse for one or both of their parents. So even though they're attempting to create a loving, connected, passionate relationship with someone that is healthy, they have never experienced that in an intimate way. So the heart has a thermometer, so to speak, that is set at a temperature that is tempestuous in nature. So if you don't reset consciously, and it takes work to do this, it's not just watching a video. If you don't consciously work on resetting that thermostat, you'll always have a thermostat set to pain and you will continue seeking things that make you feel at home even though home might be a really painful dysfunctional or even toxic space so what i want to do today is i want to share with you seven steps if you don't want to be breadcrumb again and you don't want to just deal with the surface level bs that most people are asking you to go into and you really want to shift this from the core where you really become not for maybe the guy who's doing the breadcrumbing, but for someone, an irresistible, irreplaceable woman then loving yourself at the highest level in action is the thing that's going to get you there. If you want to shift this breadcrumbing, I want you to ask yourself this question, get a white piece of paper and write things down. After you watch this video, come back and really listen to it. If you just listen to me saying these things, it won't have as much of an impact as if you really take the time to do it. The first question is, what benefits do I gain or have I gained by accepting breadcrumbs? And you might be saying, man, you lost me right now. Are you crazy? There's no benefits. But think about it this way. What if by accepting breadcrumbing, you don't have to experience deep vulnerability because you know the guy in question will never actually go there. You don't have to get emotionally, physically, or spiritually naked in front of anyone because the guy that's actually doing the breadcrumbing and is dangling this little string in front of you is never going to want to do that. Maybe you're avoiding being abandoned by someone because someone can't abandon you if they weren't in it to begin with. Maybe you're avoiding someone looking deep into your soul and thinking that you're flawed and then telling you to your face that you're flawed. Again, these are not things that are maybe first-hand experiences that your brain is thinking about, but these are things sometimes that we get to avoid by being in a situation that is doomed to work from the beginning. So you can always, at the end of the day, point out, it's just the guy who's problem me, but then you get to avoid a bunch of things. Am I saying that this is something you deserve? Absolutely not. No one deserves breadcrumbing me. The challenge is, unless you recognize the hidden benefits, the secondary gain that you're having as a result of crumbing, changing it might be difficult because when you don't recognize what you're gaining, then if you were to just leave the bread crumbing, then you'd be faced with a much more serious emotional problem, which is having to show up, having to face intimacy, having to express yourself, having to face the fear of abandonment. And breadcrumbing kind of can disguise that fear and let you never experience it. Second question that I have for you is, what are some fears, and this is something great to journal and write down, what are some fears that come up for you when you think of drawing a line in the sand? So right now, if you're going through the painful experience of somebody breadcrumbing you, saying that they'll meet you and they don't meet you. Maybe you want to see them multiple times a week and they see you once every two weeks and it's just for a few minutes and they have to leave early because they have something else going on that's more important than connecting with you. Maybe you connect with them on the phone every now and then or they text you constantly but they never pick up the phone to call you. When you call them, they're never available to talk because there's something else going on. When you go through that, if you were to think about drawing a line in the sand and expressing, here's what I need to move forward, what are the fears that come up for you? Is it a fear of scarcity? Is it a fear of being alone? Is it a fear of never finding someone this special again? When you recognize the actual fears that you have, you can start addressing them. Without recognizing them, then the breadcrumbing is actually something that is protecting you from deeper pain. On the more practical sense of the word, if you want to start shifting this, I'm going to give you a small exercise to do that can really help you. Is to imagine yourself at a vulnerable age. Maybe you're eight, maybe you're five, maybe you're feet. Whatever age you can picture yourself in where you feel you have a deep yearning for connection, a deep yearning for love, a deep yearning for safety. I want you to get a very clear picture of you as that child. And I want you to imagine not you as an adult who has many choices, but that child being breadcrumb. 
that child getting the short end of the stick, that child being told, hey, I'm going to call you and never being called. And I want you to start not imagining it in your mind, but feeling it in your heart, feeling what it feels like to let down that child. Because sometimes there's things you won't do for yourself, but if you have children, you definitely move earth, sun, and sky for your kids. Maybe you'd be willing to risk your life or lose your life in protection of them. So if you think of yourself and there's a part of you that is that child that needs that connection, needs that comfort, needs that love. And that child, not you, the adult, that child is the one who's getting the short end of the stick by this guy. You might feel way more inclined to not for you, but for her, step up and draw a line in the sand in protection of that inner, kind, vulnerable, beautiful being that is looking up to you for leadership. If you're able to pull that off, and I think you can if you give yourself a little bit of time. Then next step is to make a promise. And the promise that you're going to make is that you're not going to let that child alone. You're not going to let that child suffer the consequences of a lack of presence, a lack of safety, a lack of courage on your part. So the promise is going forward, I'm going to love myself. Like the book says, like my life depends on it. I'm going to love myself in action, not by reading affirmations or by doing the things that are hard, uncomfortable, but remind me that I'm a worthwhile human being who has a lot to offer and need nothing else to protect my inner child who's suffering, who's afraid, and I'm going to really make some space to create an opportunity for this child not to be abandoned by me. Now, before I share my last three points on how you can start shifting this from the ground up, not from a fake symptom perspective. If you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not fully aware, not aware at all of the real root cause why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every walk of life, every kind of love challenge you can imagine, every continent, and guiding those women to create the best relationships of their lives that have turned into life partnerships and marriages and put together a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. If you'd like to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description and you will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and in 60 seconds you'll have two things. The answer to the elusive question why you're still single and a custom report that's going to share based on your specific blind spot the number one thing you can do today to attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. Now, the fifth step, which is where most people start, is having a conversation with said man who's breadcrumbing you. And I want to make it even more powerful for you by saying this man that you're allowing to be breadcrumbed by because then you own it, right? So the conversation would look something super simple in your own words, something along the lines of, hey, listen, I recognize that we have a dynamic right now that feels a little off for me. I'm going to share a little bit about what I'm looking for right now in filling the blank, in dating, in a relationship, in a partnership, whatever stage you're in right now. Here's what I'm looking for right now. I'm looking for a guy who has this vision for connection, for unity, that can prioritize me, not as the only thing in his life, but a high priority in his life. It doesn't seem like right now that person is you. Tell me more about how you think of this. Just open the conversation. It's not a monologue, it's a dialogue. So tell me more about what you think about what I just shared. The guy might say, yes, you're right. I have no time for this. And then you have some ammunition to move forward. He might say, you know what? I'm really sorry. Let me make it up to you or somewhere in between. But the thing is, you want to acknowledge there's an elephant taking a crap in the living room and the whole thing is smelly and no one's talking about it. So you're bringing with kindness, not saying you're doing it wrong, saying here's what I need to move forward. Not you're bad for bringing crumbing me, but I can't allow this to continue going forward in my life. I love myself too much. And if you're not someone right now who has the time or the space to grow this relationship in a way that feels consistent, in a way that feels healthy, in a way that feels like we're both a team, then I really appreciate you. I don't want to waste your time. and I don't want to waste my time, so I'm ready to move on. Now, the sixth step in this would be to make a commitment to yourself. The commitment is that you're going to step into this love that I spoke about when you make a promise to yourself, but you're going to make the commitment that you're going to, as many times a day as you have to, step into this self-love, step into this worth, step into this drawing of the light in a kind and gentle way with someone else, but still firm. Because the commitment of I'm going to love myself is not a decision you get to make one day and can live happy for the rest of your life. It's a decision that some days you'll have to make 30 times in a single day. So when you understand it's an uphill 
climb. And some days you'll be tested more than others, but your commitment isn't to, I'm going to say this to myself and just set it and forget it, but I'm going to do this 20, 30 times a day if I need to, sometimes multiple times an hour until it becomes part of my nature, until it becomes rewiring of my nervous system. Then you're in the right space to do this. The last step, which is something that can exponentially accelerate you not being breadcrumbed by human beings, is to get help. Depending upon where you are in your journey, if you're more into the never having dealt with the deep challenges that took place in your life, if there's a lot of trauma in your life, then therapy is your first line of defense. And by therapy, I mean good trauma-based therapy. If you have already gone through some therapy or the situation right now is not something that is so much about the wounds of your childhood, but it's more about the strategy and getting a bit more confidence, then coaching can be an incredibly powerful avenue for you. No matter what you decide to do my challenges for you today are to watch this video again if you need to answer some of the questions because they'll give you some insight that just watching the video won't but if you catch yourself it's been a few years and you've done your best and you've watched videos and you've listened to podcasts and you're not getting it then get professional support hope this is helpful and useful if you do it would mean the world to me and my channel if you click like and subscribe because this is how i can grow and reach more women and if you'd like to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want with gimmicks manipulation games or stupid techniques make sure to go to the next video right here